If you want it's Emily, today's video is gonna be a Friday Reads video because I wanted to update you on my reading. I feel like I might do those videos more often because it's the easiest way for me to kind of update my TBR, kind of letting you know what I'm reading, how I feel about it so far. Because apparently my library doesn't understand that I need to know what I'm gonna be reading in the beginning of the month and weirdly enough, I get my requested books anytime. So, but really, um, I have been like having all the books that I've been requested like bang 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 one after the other and I've also received uh, one or two arcs so I'm trying to like keep up with my TBR but also the books I want to read right now so it's a little bit all over the place. I wanted to kind of update you, give you quick little reviews. I will be giving you more thoughts uh, at the end of the month in my wrap up but kind of wanted to just update you on what I've been reading because yeah I've not been following my TBR. <laughs> I'm gonna start with where I'm at right now considering that the four last books that I finished were not on my TBR. So the first one was Dear Ijawele or Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. And this book was fairly short, it's a fairly short uh, non-fiction book. It basically started as uh, her writing an email to a friend that uh, just had a baby and she wanted to raise her daughter to become a feminist. And those are just like obviously 15 suggestions to kind of help her do that and honestly Chimamanda is just such an amazing writer, an amazing woman and she is so good at summarizing really big complex ideas and making it so like matter of fact simple and you just can't contradict her. It just makes so much sense whenever she says it and explains herself, give examples and if you ever have actually the chance to listen to her, uh, either an interview or she did a t uh, TED talk for the um, We Should All Be Feminist and she's just such a delight to listen to. She's obviously beautiful but she's just so brilliant and I might be a little bit in love with her and let's be real, it just warms up my cold dead heart to know that people like her out there making a difference and yes if you have a chance to read anything by her I definitely recommend it I definitely enjoy that book and I do have a few of her novels which I definitely need to get to eventually I have Americana do I have it yes I do have it on my shelf so I need to get to that one so that was the first book that I finished I also listened to the audiobook uh, release by Patrick Ness and Patrick Ness is also a wonderful writer. His writing is beautiful to read. This book was, I think, like on Goodreads, it was categorized as a fantasy. Uh, it's technically two different books. There is a like contemporary story, uh, LGBTQ plus uh, coming of age, which uh, is kind of common. You actually hear a lot of people mention those on uh, BookTube. So if you have, if it's something you like to read, you, there's so many recommendations. There's like Simon versus the Homosapien Agenda. There's a uh, Aristotle and how to discover the secret of the universe, uh, we already end. So it's a fairly common subject and it's great actually that it's becoming more common. And I enjoyed that bit of the story. However, there was a second bit which was, I feel like it would maybe more say like magical realism instead of fantasy. And you're following the story of a girl that got killed but it's just so weird and vague and just not my cup of tea. So since I was stuck listening to the audiobook I couldn't skip those sections. So if you read the physical book and you realize that you only like the contemporary section you can totally skip the pages because I thought you know maybe it's gonna start making sense towards the end and the stories are barely connected so just my two cents. So that was the audiobook I listened to and I'm still confused. I definitely recommend uh, books from Patrick Ness. Uh, More Than This was great. Even if you usually prefer contemporaries, I would definitely recommend uh, More Than This because once again, you're following a gay main character. He dies and this is how the story starts. Like he wakes up after dying. And there's a sci-fi twist to it, but I thought it was really, really interesting. Uh, there's also uh, Monster Calls, which also something that's really popular became a movie and it's a story about grief and it was great also really great writing so definitely recommend him. I'm not sure this book would be the first one I would recommend though. I'm a little about it. I also finished Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman and so good. Uh, I feel like everyone has been saying how the second book is better than the first one and I feel like very often the second book in his trilogy, I believe it's a trilogy, uh, suffers of the whole like middle book <laughs> syndrome and it just seems like it's a bunch of fillers and it's just kind of like, ugh, get to the point. And it did end up on a cliffhanger, which I usually hate. 
But it wasn't that bad on this one. Like, obviously you really, really want to know what's gonna happen, but there was enough substance throughout the whole book that you're still kind of satisfied. So it's not like it was just a middle book, you know what I mean? So yes, if you don't know anything, the first book is Sight, which I have right here. And I did like the first one. It's basically a utopia world where uh, nobody dies anymore. And the second one obviously continues in there. You're following uh, people that are, uh, their job is to kill people to just control the population. And you're following uh, two main characters that become sites. And the second book, there was so much political intrigue, which was great. I feel like not everyone likes it, but if you really love uh, political intrigue, I definitely recommend it. It's a sci-fi, so there was also artificial intelligence. Technically, the Thunderhead is the big old machine uh, keeping the whole world just keep turning and uh, keeping everything under control, except that you can't intervene uh, whenever sites do something. Basically, it's off limit. And it was really great to learn more about the Thunderhead and yeah, like I said, a bunch of uh, political intrigue. I did enjoy it more than the first one too. So people are definitely right whenever they say that. And then I finished an arc, which I was super happy to get. It's uh, The Death of uh, Mrs. Westaway by Root Ware. And I, it was my second book by her. I read In Dark Dark Wood by her last year and I enjoyed it, but it's not something that really stayed with me. And I believe I like this one better. With that said, I feel like it's gonna be kind of complicated to like give a detailed review. So I'm gonna keep that for my wrap up at the end of the month. But if you are looking for a uh, very atmospheric story, it's a mystery. Uh, someone like basically the girl gets a letter uh, telling her that her grandmother died and she's supposed to get some money out of it She doesn't really think she's related to those people, but she's really broke So she decides to go and um, There's a lot of like family drama and yeah, it's a big old house and you, there's like the old um, she's not really a servant but kind of woman and she doesn't really feel welcome uh, with her but then like siblings and like uh, uncles and just Again, family drama. She doesn't really know what happened to uh, her mom, who's her dad, and yes, a lot of drama, very gothic feel, and it was really great. Actually, the book really feels like the cover. They really did a great job with the cover, and I do recommend it. With that said, I feel like I'm kind of already giving my review, but with that said, I feel like the mystery wasn't that mind-blowing. I feel like one of my main criteria for a thriller mystery is for me to be surprised. I don't feel like I was that surprised, but I still enjoy it mostly because of the whole like atmospheric gothic feel. So if it's something you're really into, I would definitely recommend it because it is coming out. Actually, let me double check. Yes, it is coming out at the end of the month. So uh, if you have read something by her or even if you're just into the whole premise, I would definitely recommend uh, checking it out. It wasn't something that was like mind blowing for me, but I definitely don't regret reading it. I would recommend to people that like that specific feel. So. Yes. <laughs> so those are the books that I have finished as of today. And I'm currently listening to an audiobook, which I wanted to share since it's also something that was not on my TBR. I'm telling you, like, I have not been following my TBR, but I'm currently listening to Stranger Dreamer by Elaine Taylor, which I know, I know a lot of people wanted me to read it. It's a Y fantasy story. And to be honest, I'm currently like 50%-ish into it, a little bit more than that. And I'm enjoying it. But I understand why people said that you had to like pretty much read half of it before the story kind of starts. I didn't hate the first bit, but so far I do feel like it's a bit overhyped. Maybe the second half will like blow my mind and I'll take it back. But so far I'm enjoying it. As an audiobook, it's kind of long. It's like 18 hours, I think. And I am listening to it at like 1.4 speed. So it's not going to take me 18 hours, but it's a long audiobook. So I'm hoping uh, the second half will uh, be better. Not that the first one is bad. I'm like giving it a bad review right now. But basically you're following the main character who is called Stranger Dreamer. He's an orphan that became a librarian and he's obsessed with a certain like magical world that nobody really believes exists anymore, but ends up existing and he's sent on an adventure there trying to, well, he ends up kind of fighting the kids of the dead gods. <laughs> that That's gonna be my description. So I mean, I don't think it's that far away. So yeah, so far I'm enjoying it, but I'll definitely have to keep you updated because it's a little bit all over the place right now, my review. I'm not sure how I feel about it. There seems to be the beginning of a romance, which I'm not big on, but I might end up enjoying it. I think at this point, I will be continuing with my TBR. And I say that, and I'm 
pretty sure next week I'll end up doing another Friday Reads because I will realize that I have not been following my TBR. Because right now I just realized like I have a few books that I'm waiting for from my library. I might end up getting them because I feel like it's never actually accurate whenever they tell me like oh two three weeks so I'll let you know but I also have the audiobook another audiobook ready for whenever I'm done with Stranger Dreamer and it is uh, The Glass Castle by uh, Jeanette Walls and it is a non-fiction story about her uh, her growing up and her family like that's pretty much all I know but again kind of like going to my books not knowing too much and it seems to have great review I believe it was made into a movie which is kind of why I wanted to read it ASAP I do have the physical copy but I like to get to audiobooks whenever I can to always have one on the go. So basically this is my backup for when I'm done with Stranger Dreamer unless I get one of the other books that I'm currently waiting for. So I think at this point uh, the next books I will be reading will be from my TBR. Probably these two I have run by Blake Crouch which is a thriller I believe. A thriller sci-fi is really big on those type of books and I'm living for it so it's kind of fairly short, but I believe it's like a little bit like his other books, the ones I liked, uh, that you just can't put them down. So hoping it's going to be the case. I will probably read this like ASAP. And uh, same thing with Contact by Carl Sagan. It's a sci-fi. It's the first Contact sci-fi, which I've been really into right now. And I'm also reading uh, an ebook, which is, let me get it, The Oracle Year by Charles Soule, I think. I'm still like waiting for the Kindle thing, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And this one is Guy, he's a magician, musician, musician. <laughs> and like he wakes up one day and he has like 108 uh, prediction for the future that will all happen. And like you just try to figure out uh, is what is he going to do with that, trying to make money, is it going to affect the world. And I have been reading books that are fairly similar-ish with that type of premise, like changing something and seeing how the world become a little bit of a dystopia. And I'm enjoying it so far. I'm not sure I love the writing, but I really love the premise, so I'm hoping it's gonna get better. I'm currently like, how many percent into it? Like 48% into it. So probably will be able to update you a little bit in my next Friday reads or in my wrap up by the end of the month. So yes, I have been like reading a lot. Like we're only like a week and a half into the month and I have finished six books and I'm in the middle of a couple ones. So things are looking great for me so far. How is your month reading? reading month going. Uh, basically update me. What books are you currently reading? Which ones are you currently enjoying? Are you planning on reading anything exciting? Let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to also let me know like is it something that you want me to do more often? I feel like Friday reads are fun because not everyone follows me on Goodreads. If you don't definitely recommend doing so but it just gives me an opportunity to talk to you more often slash just update you on my reading. So yes. Don't forget to subscribe if it's not already done. I will be putting on the screen other videos that I've done that I recommend you check out and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.